Greetings YouTube. My friend Skull over on Skullgrim's channel uh, just posted a video today at the time of this filming dealing with um, the legality of certain items that are, can be carried on your person and the fact that some things just don't make sense when it comes to those weapon type bands. Um, and one of the arguments is that uh, some items are made specifically for harming another um, and they are easily concealed. But lots of things are easily, easily concealed. Um, but he specifically spoke about nunchucks, uh, balisongs, and um, throwing stars or shuriken. And all of them are intended to be used as weapons, though they didn't necessarily grow out of weapons. I mean, nunchucks grew out of threshing flails as did the european flail they grew out of flesh uh, you know uh, threshing flails you you beat grain to separate the chaff from the from the from the kernel uh, from what your your aim is and you know the, the wheat from the chaff as they as they say um balisongs were just tools it was just a different method of folding a weapon or a tool it was no better or worse than any other time um it could be done with one hand. That makes some people nervous. But there's lots and lots of knives that can be opened with one hand. Uh, I have a bad example of that right here, which is this right here. It's not particularly well well done. Uh, this is just a supposed to be a utility knife of some variety. It's not really impressing the crap out of me. I can tell you that. But the idea of opening something one handed makes some people nervous. And yet, this is perfectly legal. Why? Because it is uh, requires you to use a thumb or a finger. And it can't be, you can't be flicked open like a gravity knife. Um, and yet somehow this is considered to be safer than a balisong because a balisong can be easily opened with one hand. Not by me, I'm not good with balisongs. Um, and the throwing stars, they were never meant to kill. You, I know you see it in movies, people being killed with balisong. I mean, with the throwing stars, people are not meant to be killed with them. They were weapons of distraction. They were intended to keep somebody busy while you were doing something else. Um, essentially allowing you to escape or allowing you to close a distance um, or doing something other nefarious acts. But the, it was never meant as a single attack that was going to incapacitate or kill a target. Um, never, ever designed that way. <laughs> okay, I don't care what anybody think tells you otherwise. That was not their purpose. Um, you can kill with a throwing knife, but a throwing knife is a significantly larger, heavier uh, item designed much differently than a throwing star or a shuriken. Um, and then, of course, you have the nunchuck, which is as dangerous to the user as it is to an intended target. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody who is not experienced with nunchucks practicing with nunchucks, which is why they make practice nunchucks. I own a set of those just for fun. Um, I actually own some real ones as well. Um, and yeah, it's very, it's very entertaining to watch somebody who, who, who is not skilled with a set of nunchucks, use a set of nunchucks. I do recommend, however, uh, staying back from them when they do that. Now, to my mind, why those items are considered things that should be banned are because of social constructs. It's the way brass knuckles are considered to be dangerous. The social contract, they were used by bad people. Bad people carried nunchucks, whereas good people carried pukos. This is a fixed blade knife. I can guarantee you that more people have been killed with these than with knuckle dusters. More people have been killed with these than with nunchucks, all right? And nobody's in kill with a, with a shuriken, probably. Um, as far as balisongs go, I can't tell you the statistics. It's a knife. This is a knife. Uh, maybe balisongs are in the same range. I'm not sure. But this is a fixed blade, incredibly concealable. It's not hard to conceal this on your person, and incredibly fast to deploy, because all you do is pull it out of the sheath, and now you have a point sharp, pointy thing, okay? Now, for me, the, the reasoning that the specifically balisongs, shurikens, and nunchucks are banned is social construct of racism. They are all associated with 
Asia. They were all popularized by the, the um, popularity of martial arts films in the 60s and the 70s. That was where they came from. They were seen as a foreign invasion upon Western films and onto, onto Western soil. Um, and the rise of martial arts as uh, a means of bringing in Eastern thought into the Western world. And what do I mean by that? Well, a lot of martial arts, Western, uh, Eastern martial arts, deal heavily with the philosophy behind the art form itself. And a lot of that is based on uh, Buddhism or Zen Buddhism, uh, things like that. And that was very much seen by a whole lot of people in, in the West, particularly in the United States, um, uh, and in you know, the Western sphere, Canada, Europe, things like that, as foreign and dangerous. In fact, there was even uh, a ban on yoga in some prisons because of the religious philosophical connections to the to, I, it's, yeah, it makes no sense. There are some Christian groups that tried to ban it in, in schools and things like that because um, of the association with an Eastern philosophical or uh, position or an Eastern religion. Um, but for me, that's the reason that phallus songs and shuriken and nunchucks are considered banned uh, because of racism. How many households in America have baseball bats? I mean, admittedly, my household has a lot more baseball bats than probably your household does. Uh, not to mention all the things I've turned baseball bats into. Um, I heap a selection of them in my basement because they're really great platforms for building new toys. Um, but I can guarantee you more people have been killed with baseball bats than nunchucks. And more safely, because the person swinging a baseball bat is far less likely to harm themselves. And yet we don't ban baseball bats. And if it's danger that you're trying to outlaw like your risk then what about skateboards as my friend skull comments about bicycles people die on bicycles all the time nobody bans those for danger and they're ubiquitous let's do a comparison of how many people have died because of a bike accident and how many people have died to a nunchuck right there's no comparison but those weapons all have that they're asian they are foreign. They have invaded our soil. Um, and I've always, I've always thought it was absurd. I've always thought it was very silly. I also think that, like some of the really fine lines, like in some places you can't carry a knife that can be opened one-handed. In some places you can't carry a knife of a specific size. Some places you can't carry a knife if the blade can be locked in place. Um, there's also going to be some exceptions for that. I would be hard pressed to find a place where you couldn't carry an open L, which is a blade that can be locked in place. But open L's are seen as picnic knives. They have this wonderfully pastoral vibe attached to them. They aren't seen as weapons, but they're sharp pointy things. And if you have a sharp pointy thing, you could harm someone. Go talk to a prison guard. They'll tell you how you can harm somebody with almost anything, particularly if you have the intent. So I have always been mystified by the fact that people didn't realize that if you peeled back that cover, that underneath the, the rage and the, you know, the, the controversy, it's, it's just racism. It really is. Those things are associated with Asia. And because of that, they are considered not welcomed here.